TrialWorks 2019 AAJ Winter Meeting, User Group Meeting and Webinar, Part 4. All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to get started again. Uh, Eric has a couple more things that uh, he's going to show us. Uh, and then after that, we're going to do a big Q&A session. So thank you for sticking with us. We got a lot more cool stuff to show you. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Eric. Good afternoon again. Um, and just going through and looking at the web intake again, uh, being able to, when you're doing intake notes, being able to add an intake note, again, these are things that have come up as, as we're breaking with not only people that are here, but also everybody that's working at Trawix, being able to come in and add a new, new note or keep adding notes. And again, if you add a note here to the intake notes, it is going to add it to the notes tab once that case gets created. Okay, um, being able to email the intake details. And again, if you do that, it's gonna bring up every field that's here. So if you wanted to share that with an attorney, so say you're out on the road, you're an investigator and you've done that, and now you wanna share all the information you got, you can share that information quickly and efficiently in an email and send that to an attorney or someone at the office to follow up, to look at, hey, I took this intake, this is where it's at. Go ahead and enter uh, Phillips and who you're gonna send that to. And again, the more fields you fill out, the more it's gonna populate this email for you. Okay. So I know we've covered a lot about the web intake. Mr. Grant, I will call you and I will let you know. Uh, Bob Grant sent me an email asking, when can I get the intake and when will we set it up? I'll call and give you all those specifics once it is ready and I'll run through it with you. I hate you're not here in person. Good. I, they said, how can we pick and choose? So when you go to share, if you share with a new contact or say it's someone that's not listed from there, I can edit the form and say, I only want our client to see these fields. Good. All right. So again, one of the biggest things that we've seen and one of the things I've seen even going forward with new firms is we wanna set up our view, our dashboard view for us as a user. So when you see this list, and again, one of the things that I've seen a lot recently is when we come in, it's only set to two columns. And people haven't adjusted these. That's what these are here for. So I don't have to get into the tabs to figure out what's the date of accident, what's the statute. Click on that, go to the clients tab, go to the date of accident. Build that up the way you wanna see it. And then of course, if you need more fields, go down to customize and change it to four columns and get those four columns the way that you want it. So you don't have to go to the clients tab. I don't have to go to the docket tab. I don't have to go to the case info tab to see this information that's here. And does that, uh, does that change for all cases? It changes and updates by case, not by user. So if I set mine up and Diane sets hers up and Luana sets hers up and Janice sets hers up, it's set up for me. So don't, I'm not gonna go to Janice's desk and say, why does your dashboard look all crazy? Because that's the way she has it set up for her. That's what she wants to see. So if you're looking for those specific fields, that's what you wanna set up and make sure it's set for you. Good. And also when you have those 12 fields, having the last note field, if you click underneath the case name, I have the last note. So it's literally telling me the last note that was made in this case. We are 
trying our best to keep you from having to hop, skip, and jump around to find the pieces of information that should be readily available right there staring you in the face. I never want someone to say, hold on a second, let me go pull the hard file, or hold on a second, let me find it here, or let me try to find this here. If it's right here and those fields are filled in, I can talk to an adjuster pretty quick or someone pretty quick. You're first, Brittany. My suggestion for this hot dashboard yes? would be very helpful if you could be able to put the client to your trigger. Let's make a note. Because, like, when I'm the phone, the right. Anybody, they're all guessing. I got it bounced out and then I made the So the, the, the question was is one of the suggestions is under the clients tab having the date of birth or DOB as one of the options. I hope everybody in our office wrote that down so we could submit that. Yes, ma'am. What I was going to ask you is a little updated. Um, back in the day, we used to be able to, on any given task, look at the date of birth, the year of the birth, and the drop down. Mm -hmm. We can look at document transactions. Yep. We created the document and everything. We, we don't have that anymore. When you say here? Yeah, right click. I did. And document transactions. Yeah. It's back in 11.3 beta 3. 11.3? The 11.3 that we're talking about today, I am on beta 3, and it is back for you. So in 11.3, it will be available. And the question was, when they right-click on the date, they want to see all the transactions that have been associated with that line or that document. Being able to go down, see the document transactions, and seeing those things that were done or associated with that document. So if you don't have it now, it is definitely coming back for you. Okay. I'm getting a couple of questions about timing. So I'm going to answer a few of those now. Okay. Um, folks are asking about the release date for 11.3. Okay. Uh, that is in testing now. So it's yes. got to run yes. through the QA process. Uh, but that is expected to be released in March. So we'll keep you guys posted, but we need another month of testing and tweaking and making sure it's perfect. I've also gotten questions on web intake and when okay. that's going to be available. That is available now. So okay. if you're not using that, call support, get it set up, ask for some training. We're here to help. Let's go but you do it. not have to wait for that. Well, you have to wait for us to get back to the office. But that's about as long right. as you have to wait. So reach out and we'll get that taken care of for you. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go into general QA okay. throughout the webinar. I've gotten okay. a variety that some weren't quite on subject with what you were presenting at the time. That's fine. Um, so David Parker okay. is okay. asking, can you search for a document throughout TriWorks? Correct. Correct. Yes, yes, Mr. Parker, you can. If you, if you have the TriWorks search, search installed right at the top, you can type in what you're looking for and search this case or search all cases. Again, the trial work search, once you scan a document and you put it into trial works, our search engine will go in. If it's a PDF document, it will try to OCR it. If it's already been OCR'd, it will then catalog the words that are in there. If it hasn't been OCR'd, it will OCR it, catalog the words in it, and make that document word searchable. Please note, if you take 500 pages of medical records and you scan them and you drop them into the trial works, it's not going to be ready in 15, 20 minutes. The OCR process takes time. It doesn't matter if we OCR it or you OCR it. It takes time. So if you do something like that, give it a day. Check, check it the next morning. See if it's available at that point. That, no, that's with 11.2 right now. It's been around since uh, at least 11. Right. Yes. 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 Because when our when you pull it into trial works, our search will OCR that document automatically. So if you're taking the time to OCR it at the copier and you put 50 pages in there and you and you run it and it takes 30, 40, 50, two hours to do it, and then it publishes it to your scan folder, we would do the same thing. 
Now, the thing that comes with that is, do you want the time for the copier to do the OCR or TrialWorks to do the OCR? Because if you've OCR'd it and then you put it into TrialWorks, our search just says, boom, it's already been OCR'd. Let me search the words, catalog the words. So now when you go to search for those documents or those words in that document, it will automatically find it right then for you. Because it doesn't have to re-OCR it, it's already been done. This is correct. No, it, our search will go back and OCR those that haven't been OCR'd already. So once the new search gets installed, if you have, say, a thousand documents and all of the PDFs and none of them have been OCR'd, it's going to start with document number one and start OCR. Sir? You just set a record for the number of times the letter OCR was said in about 15 seconds. <laughs> Object character recognition. So it takes a PDF and reads or breaks it down so it actually reads the words like it would be a Word document. Or it does its very best to break those words down so it can actually read those sentences that are in that PDF document. Because most people don't realize that a PDF is almost like a picture image. So it breaks it down. Yep, it automatically does it for you. If you've got the new search, so you don't have to sit there and wait for the copier to do the OCR and then put it to your folder. It just does it for you once you bring it into TrialWorks. Good. Are you ready for more? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? No, ma'am. Nope, it automatically does it. So what happens, you don't believe me? <laughs> I promise. Uh, it automatically OCRs it. So if you come back two or three days later and you're looking for that specific document, you can type in a word that's in that document and it's going to give you a return. All right. I think I got a simple one for you. Are we able to print our quick note? No, unless you do a screenshot. So what they're at, the question was, one, does everybody know how to add a quick note? Let's go there. So under case info, under extra info, there is a quick note. In that, you can type in whatever you want to notify someone that gets into this case. So say this person doesn't want you to call them at work. So you type in don't call at work ever. Once you've made that note, if you get into another case, and you go back to that case, from there on, you get that quick note. And I can't do anything. I can't close trial works. I can't do anything till I acknowledge that I have read that message. Do not call at work. Don't call till after 4 p.m. works the night shift. Whatever it is or something that you feel is valuable enough to let everyone know that comes into that case. Don't notify this person. Don't talk to this person. This is what they like. This is what they don't like. They record phone conversations. Be careful what you say or whatever it may be. You want to identify and let everybody know that gets in there that that's what this note is. Case info, extra info, and then that quick note is right there. If you wanted to print that quick note, the only way to do would be take a screenshot of when it's up and then you could print that screenshot. Yes, you can make a dashboard of your quick notes. So again, dashboard is used to do anything that's a field in TrialWorks. So if you need a dashboard, we can build those for you. And again, just like everything else, there's no cost that's associated. So if there's two or three reports that you run in TrialWorks, and you're like, I wish I had one report of all of those different reports. Let us know what the fields you're looking for are. We can build you a dashboard. So when you look at this, it can give you everything. Somebody called me last week and said, you know what? I've been trying for the last three days to get an email list of every client that we have. And I just can't do it. It can't be done. And I literally came in here to the contact sample view, bumped over to the email address said it's there, you've got it. And then I showed them how to export it to Excel. 
and then we filtered down to delete everybody that didn't have an email address. So she had every client that she wanted with their email addresses within five minutes of talking with us. Right over here at the bottom right, the, the question was, how do we export it to Excel? So in the bottom right, I can export to Excel, PDF, or Word. If I export it to Excel, it's going to come up in Excel, and now I can adjust those fields as I see fit. Once you get those email addresses, you can create either a distribution loop or just copy and paste in the two and go ahead and send your email blast. That quick? That, well, the question was, once I've signed up or I have a dashboard that I like, can I have that dashboard sent to me on a periodic basis? So if I want my statute of limitations uh, dashboard. I've got it set up. I've got the client name. I've got the file number. I've got the event date. I've got the date of birth. I've got the statute date. And I want that emailed to me every Monday at 9 a.m. I can go right over here to subscribe to this view and tell it I want it at a certain time, when I want it, how I want it, and who it's going to go to. So I don't have to worry on the first of every month, January 1st, February 1st, March 1st, when I come in that first Monday, it's going to be there waiting for me so I can see the SOLs that are coming over the next month, two months, six months, whatever you set that dashboard up to do. Does that help, Diane? Right on. All right. I'm going to earlier in the webinar here. Okay. I got okay. a tech question from Cindy. Yeah, I'm pushing your limits. What is the best software? to use to integrate into TrialWorks to scan from your MFP. Do you have a preference there? If it's an, if it's uh, an, uh, usually what I would tell somebody if they have the MFP, whoever the manufacturer is, usually has a decent piece of software. Now, if you can point that scanner folder to a certain scan folder, I would do that because at that point, I can then tell Filet I want it to touch just that folder. So if my MFP has a scan folder, I can point file it to that scan folder so I don't have to click and drag and move things around. I can just click right here and it, and just, it just brings everything in for me. And I gave you a hard time for OCR earlier and then I acrimoned it myself. So MFP is multifunction printer. printer. Yep, yep. MFP is multifunction printer. So again, if it's a brother, if it's an HP, if it's a Lexmark, whatever it may be, it usually comes with a piece of software that you can then redirect where you want those scans to go. Of course, they always start with the C colon backslash my documents, backslash scans, backslash whatever it may be, depending on the provider. If you create a folder, you can click on the folder here and file it and click to that folder. At that point, you go to the scanner, you scan five things, you scan 10 things, you scan a thousand things. You can click on this one or two, the import files, and it just brings everything that's in that folder. And again, if we're using this for file it, once we've associated a case and a tab to go to, and we scan it or we transfer them, it will then clean out that scan folder. So that scan folder should be empty for you. All right. Cindy, I hope that helped with the technical issue. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes. You can, if you're in version 11, you can easily click right there on the cell. Mm -hmm. And so the question was, in contacts, not just clients, in contacts, can I open up and text that person? If you click on the cell phone number, there's a text bubble right there that I can then text that person. Also, what a lot of people don't realize is I don't want to go to contacts to try to text the person. If I'm in correspondence or if I'm in insurance and liens and I want to talk to Julie McCoy, my adjuster, I can go to current case and it has a full list under the quick contact of every contact that's in that case. So if I need Julie's number, it's right there. I can click it, never leaving insurance and liens, so I can stay where I'm at 
and not have to hop, skip, and jump around. Same thing, if I click on a contact that I know has a cell phone number, it gives me that cell phone number there. I can hit the drop down and shoot, send a text, and there's my text message, just like we saw in the clients tab or in the contact itself. Does that help? Yeah. Awesome. What was that, Janice? What about filing? Sure. So the question was, how can I, if all of these go to one case, how can I get the all of these documents to one case? Because I don't want to go through and individually select, select, and down through the list. If you get a CD of a thousand documents, the last thing you want to do is individually touch each one of them. So in the bottom left, the little clipboard is assigned to all. At that point, I can hit the drop down, say I want them to all go to this case, and they're all correspondence. I can associate a category, a party, and an author for them if I need it. Hit the checkbox, it associates the case and the tab, and then I can do my transfer. The same thing that comes with this too is that even if you have 20 documents, they all go to the same case, but 10 are correspondence, three are medicals, at least put them all to the same case, and then you can go through and say, you know, 10 of the 20 are correspondence, so I'm putting them all to correspondence, and then I'm gonna individually change those as I need. I've had people get a CD of 1,500 documents, and they went through and individually set them up, and then they call and say, there's gotta be an easier way. And then they cry when I show them, yeah, you could easily do it right there and do everything at one time. And they're like, I spent three days setting this up and it could have taken me three minutes. And I said, yes. So if you did them all at one time, yep. you, would say you, would, you would put them all like one tab like correspondence. Correct. And they would all go into the correspondence tab. Correct. And how would you move them once they got there? I wouldn't want to move them if they went to a separate tab. I would associate, so say this one goes to pleadings. Yeah. I would move it down to pleadings. And this one goes to okay. depot or insurance or whatever, documents, whatever it may be. I would do it here before I transferred it. Now, let's say you did make the mistake and you transferred all 10 of those documents, but three of them really need to go to pleadings. You can easily go in, and again, this is like softballs. I'm gonna hit these all day long. I can go to correspondence and right click on the subject of that item, transfer a record, tell it I wanted to go to this tab, and I can move it because I truly put it in the wrong tab. Same thing if this document belongs in another case. I can hit the drop down, choose the other case, tell it I want to go to that tab and make a copy. Oh, and file it? Yeah. On your desktop, when TriWorks gets installed, there is a file it folder also that gets installed. Yep. Let's say that document is applied to multiple cases. So you have mom, dad, and little Johnny that are all involved in an auto accident. You don't create one case for them, you create three cases. Well, this document comes in and it applies to all three cases. So rather than me having to transfer it over, put it, and then transfer a record, transfer a record, I can click multi here and say, I want this document to go to these three cases at one time. Correct. Any folder that you choose. Correct. Correct. Yep. If you click that folder right there, it's going to ask you where you want to draw it from. Exactly. Okay. A uh, couple people missed where the quick note was again. So can you sh show where that is? And then somebody else is asking when you don't need it anymore and it's driving you crazy. How do you get rid of it? Not a problem. Not a problem. So when, you're so when you're in the case, go to the case info tab. The extra info here in the bottom. And then the field is right there in quick note. Same thing. If you're done with that quick note, you can delete that quick note out of here and it will then remove it and it won't pop up anymore. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. All right, moving on. How do you customize the role? on the contact tab. In the con in the contact tab here. The role. The role. Mm -hmm. In the client in the client tab. 
Clients no. tab. Clients tab. They, uh, they ask contact, but fair enough. In the clients, In the clients tab. tab. The client role that is here, that is a trial work self-building field. So if you don't have something there that you want, type it in. Please note, if you type something in wrong, it is then available in all cases wrong. So please check the drop down, because again, the last thing we want is 25 different ways to identify the owner operator or the owner or the plaintiff. Yes, ma'am. You can always right click on those, most of the self building fields. You have the right click fixed drop down option that you can change from that old value to a new value. Only administrators have this option. If you are not an administrator, when you right click and click on that fixed drop downs, it will tell you you don't have admin rights, so you cannot adjust that field. It will blank it out. Right click, fix drop downs. Good. All right. Uh, going back to intake for a moment, because that's sir? certainly a popular subject today. Are we talking, are we talking to or intake or web intake? Web intake. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. So staff member A creates an intake mm -hmm. and starts putting in data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then staff member B goes on site to meet with the client. Correct, correct. And staff member B access the intake and 100% to the data. 100%. So, so even if Bob Phillips calls, we get the phone call and paralegal A enters the intake in trial works. We then call investigator that's already on the road and we tell investigator B, Go by General Hospital and speak with client. Investigator B can then bring up that intake here in the web intake and then make adjustments or changes as needed right then. Again, these are interchangeable. They work together. If you make an adjustment here, it is making the adjustment in your trial works. If they make the adjustment there, it is making it here live, real time. Perfect. All right, this is, nope, oh, I got another one here. Uh, web intake, are the drop down libraries the same as in trial works? 100%. Again, if that library for a status or status, substatus, substatus one, once they're associated and done, they are also gonna be the same ones here. Because again, when you're creating those libraries, it is across the board. Yes, Diane. Oh, I thought that was. She was just saying that. Her muffin wasn't great. <laughs> I saw a little bowl of muffin smidgens and it clearly didn't go well. Um, okay, so a much more general question. Okay. We talked about uh, UDF earlier and yes. we explained yes. that those are user defined fields. Yes. Uh, and someone asked basically, can you revisit that uh, sure. and sure. discuss where and how a UDF might be necessary and helpful? Sure. sure. So, so what happens is with a UDF, um, one of the biggest things that prompted TrialWorks to build the UDF was a couple of years back with the BP oil spill. They came out with a purple form that you had to fill out to see where you were, if you qualified to be part of the lawsuit. There was no place in TrialWorks for that. So we built or gave you the option to create a user defined form. Again, only your administrators are going to be able to build these user-defined forms. Anybody can add information to them once they've been applied. When you go to the UDF, you can build that for whatever you're after. So if I say traffic infractions, I can build that to see whatever I want in traffic infractions. So if I were to publish this, if you clicked on it, it would show you those fields or whatever you decided you wanted to put in. Okay? And you tell it where you want this to appear, how you want it to appear, and those things. And you build it just like you had your own form that you wanted someone to fill out. Or if you're doing a mass tort end and you have a government form that someone has to 
uh, fill out so they see if they qualify for that MDL, that's what you can put in here. So again, I don't have to have someone come into the office, paper fill it out, and then someone has to manually go put it in. We can put it in at one time. Awesome. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Yep. Are you an administrator? Yes. If you're an administrator in TrialWorks, uh, the question is, uh, one of the users here noticed that I have a photos tab and I have a documents tab. If you are an administrator, you can go to settings and tabs here, click on your main office, and you can see the tabs that are associated in TrialWorks. If you look at photos, it's actually damages. So you could rename your damages to photos. If you've got damages, you could rename it to photos. Same thing with documents. I have my memo tab turned on as documents. So the last firm I was at last week probably has the documents tab turned on rather than the memo tab. And Correct. Uh, unless in your tabs, you turn on trial material. And the question was, in the case info tab, there are two tabs that you can turn on, appeals and trial material. You can then have trial material turn on all the time. If not, you can always go to the case info tab. And in the bottom right hand corner, you see the trial material tab and the appeals tab. At that point, if you restart trial works, you then get the appeals tab to do all your appellate documents. And if I go to my overflow here, I see my trial material tab that I can then turn on to build my trial notebook. Yep. Uh huh. But it leaves the thing. It will say challenge. It will say complaint. But if you click on it, and if you, because what I did is I copied it over. Right. From the right click, copy to another tab. Right. Not move it. Copy. Right. So it's the same thing as the same time period. Correct. Call us and let us look at it. We want to watch it with you. Right. Because I still need to see. Because it, one hundred percent, you do. One hundred percent, you do. And the question was, when she copies something from the pleadings tab to trial material, it is leaving pleadings even though she chooses copy rather than move. Yep. Call us and let us look at it with you because there's something that may be going on and we want to look at that. So again, if everybody doesn't know, the support number is 305-357-6500. We are there from 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. And, and one of the things, one of the biggest things for me is I tell everybody, look, if you're spinning your wheels and it takes you longer than three or four or five minutes, stop spinning your wheels and call us. The last thing we want you to do is spin your wheels for five hours on something and then you call us angry and within 30 seconds we're like, hey, all right, well, it was great talking to you. Because, because we've already resolved the issue that's literally two clicks of anything. Good? Right on. All right. I got another question, Mr. Parker. Hey. Is there reporting capability for intake cases, such as quick turn down, summary turn down, and you see? When you're looking in the intake cases, again, it's giving you the full list of all of them. You can export that to Excel and then filter to see quick turn downs, summary turn downs, uh, those cases that we did take. Also in that, if you look at the filters up top, I can see the cases that we've created in TriWorks, who it was created by, the status or substatus of those items, uh, the liability, who it's assigned to. Okay, and if I wanted to see them, I can export it to Excel just like I did our dashboard. It's gonna give it to us in Excel, and then I can come in and filter these any way that I want to at that point. Very good. Mr. Mr. Parker, I hope that answered your question. 
All right, I've got a question from Donna Ballantine. Yep, yep. I didn't catch if search within the email tab also searches text within the email or string of emails. So if you click on email and click on the binoculars, if you're searching the body, it will search the body of the string of emails. Hey, Donna from Masnick. All right, uh, another question from uh, Kathleen. Is okay. there a report option that shows the last time a client, oh, somebody asked yeah. another question, it all bumped a row on me. Is there a report option that shows the last time a client was contacted or a report that shows a list of clients who have not been contacted in the last 60 days, for example? There are reports, if you run those reports, um, and a, hold on, let me back up, because I went fast. Case, overview, and the case list summary report. And I want to see by attorney, by liability, by rainmaker, open, UC, whatever it may be. I can see the DLC and DLP, the date of last correspondence or the date of last pleading. If you're looking for those, if you're looking for contact information, the last time somebody made a note, somebody did something with that person, we can create a dashboard for you and show you any case that hasn't had any activity in X amount of time frame. So if your time frame is I want to see 90 days, anytime a case doesn't get touched in 90 days, it will then appear on the dashboard. And again, that would be something that we want to show up on the first of the month. So anybody that hasn't been talked to in the last 91 days, I want them on that report because I need somebody contacting that person, seeing how they're doing and finding out why we haven't contacted them in the last X amount of frame. All right. I don't know the answer to this one. I know you can text from just about anywhere in TrialWorks when you click on a phone number or you showed the uh, the quick contact information earlier. Quick. Quick. Yes. yes. Are you able to send a text from the intake manager? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why it's imperative. If we get a contact, when you get it, first name, last name, cell phone number, email address. If that attorneys want to talk to them, get the basics. Because right now, if I look at under my client, notice the cell phone number, notice the little bubble that's right next to the phone number, allows me to send a text even in the intake. Was that you, Brittany? Yeah. Did you send that question in? Tell me you're not in person and on the webinar. So that's exactly what it's there for. Again, it's all about communication. Even if I get first name, last name, cell phone number, are you all right with us texting you and sending texts back and forth? Sure. I'd rather you text me. Don't call me. Hopefully that answered that person's question. So one from Jeremiah. I, hey, Jeremiah. I feel like we're doing a radio call in show. Right. right? Hey, hey, Jeremiah, how's it going today? <laughs> I saw that the fast tracks in the intake wizard can be associated with certain templates. Is this feature already available or is it coming out in 11.3? It is coming out in 11.3. We wanted to show this to let you know that these things are on track and we are going to be rolling them out soon. Yes, ma'am. Here? So why didn't he filter them out? So what you need to do is the next time he's sitting at his desk, run over there and set. So the question was, when a user hits the drop down, seeing all the cases that have been settled or closed. There's two ways we can accomplish this. The funnel that's here allows us to temporarily filter out cases. So if I just want to see active cases, active cases covers under consideration, open and settled because we know not every case is settled is closed. 
So if you choose that, it's only going to show you those. Now that's temporary. Once you close TrialWorks and open TrialWorks back up again, it will revert to your default. Now to set your default, go to user tools, default values to the far left, second button in, case list filters. You can set the exact same thing that's in the funnel that's here, right here. Now, every time that will be your default. So every time you open TrialWorks from that point forward, that's what's going to show and appear. I can't tell you. User tools, default values. And then right here under case list filters, it's right there for you. So again, if you set it to active cases and you're seeing you see open and settled and you want to see a closed case, that's when I would use the funnel to see all cases. Look at that closed case. And then once you come back, you can adjust that funnel. If not, once you restart TrialWorks, it'll go back to how you have it set for your active or whatever uh, filter you have set. All right. I've got a question from Myra Reed. Okay. How do you add other types of contacts to the predefined contacts list? So other type of contacts. So for me, when it comes to contacts, you have to always check insert existing. Contact types, okay. If you're looking for contact types, you have to be an administrator. If you go to settings and contact types, at this point, you can go and add whatever you want at the bottom. Please note, when you add a contact type, up and down is what that main contact type is. Left and right, left to right is also what they can be. So just because they're an attorney, I also want them as a referral source. They're an adjuster. I want them as an adjuster, and I want them on insurance so I can use them in the insurance and lien tab. When they're a doctor, I want them on the meds so I can use them in the medical tab. Again, only administrators get those options to add or change or edit those contact types. Sorry, I thought they were trying to add contacts or different types of contacts to a case. All right, uh, I've got a question from a, a longtime client, first time asker. Uh, well, they've been using, show. his name is Ryan. They've been using TrialWorks since 2007 and has over 54,000 cases in the okay. database. He wants to know if it's possible to export some of the case data and files out of the main database into a closed file database that would then potentially be searchable. It's a big at, ask. At, at, this, at this point, there is not an option for that right now. Sorry. I'm sorry. Right, and not to be not and Patrice is in the back, and she said not to have it to be included. Search to search for cases and those things. Right now, no. Ryan, what firm? I'll tell Patrice later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all right, and David's uh, one of our uh, frequent askers here. So on the notes section. Will there be a way to have a mouse over expand the note content? He's on 11.1, and the small note box hides a lot of good information that he has to double click to see. One of the options or changes or things that I, okay, let me answer the question first. At this point, there is no, nothing that I know of in the future that's coming that would give you that option. One of the things I would do is you can always come over and drag that note box open so it gives you more of the note, more of the paragraph, and save that. So whenever you go to notes, you see that bigger part of the note so you don't have to double click and open those things. Again, if you go to your notes and if that works in correspondence and any other tab, uh, once you've opened it up, you hit save, it will save that tab across the board. So your notes tab will look that look like that across the board in every single case. All right. Uh, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Smith, Smith is asking, yeah. if a text was made from the intake, will the intake keep the information of the text that was sent? 
And where would you find that? Yes. yes. So, what so what happens is when the texts are sent, it is just like trial works. It is an email. So if you go to the documents tab and you click on email, you would see all of the text or emails that have been associated to that intake. You tried, Stephanie. I got you. Are there any other questions in the room? I don't want to. I can keep going, but I just want to make sure I'm not barreling over anybody in the room. Go ahead, Brittany. It's global. It's global. Once you've made that adjustment or change, it is for you. So the question is, if you're setting up your tabs and tab colors, is it can it be individual to a person? No, it is global. So as an administrator, if you're changing those, you're adjusting it for everybody. You're imposing your will upon the masses. Okay. All right. Easy one. You ready? Yep. From Donna. Is there a limit to the size of a document that we can save into trial works via filing? No. How do I know this? I had a firm call and said they had gotten a CD of 1,500 photos. Well, it was a DVD of 1,500 photos. They drug four and a half gigs of photos into file it and transferred it. And it took eight hours because it was pulling from the CD into file it and file it was uploading it to the server. So if your document is that big, it's going to take time, just like if you would have transferred it or tried to copy it from one area, from your computer to the server, and it takes an hour, two hours, six hours, it would be the same process. File it's just copying it up and over for you. So I have never seen a limit. When I saw that 4.5 gigs of photos, I was like, there's no way. And it transferred them. It just takes some time. All right, and I've got another question here from Tiffany Klopfer. How do you add a client's date of birth in the quick info section next to the case pull down? She doesn't see it as an option under clients. It is not an option yet. That was one of the things that Brittany had asked for earlier as a request, and it's something that we'll submit once we get back to the office. And Another question about the web intake. Mm -hmm. Once a case is converted from the intake page to TrialWorks, what access can we still give the clients or external people to view and update records? None. None. Once that case is created from the intake into TrialWorks, that intake then becomes read-only. So at that point, they have no rights to adjust anything because if you you should truly be in trial works adjusting anything that needs to be adjusted. So that intake becomes read only and you can only it is there for viewing purposes. So where does it go in trial It actually creates its own case. Okay. So when you give it it would become part of your case drop down list. That's how you build that case. Yes, that the intake cases manager is what we've seen is one of the ways the best ways actually walk an intake or a potential new client in through getting a case in trial works. New okay. case. Okay. And that'll start the new case wizard. Okay. And you can enter it directly. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at the web, intake or the intake cases manager are both there and it depends on how your administrative group has your uh, case numbering set up if it's numerical then it, say this is 105 the next number it would be 106 it just pulls like someone had gone into the new case wizard and created a new case it takes the next number available What it does is you can actually tell it you want it to incremental and it finds the highest number that it can find and builds from that number. 
Now, let's say it's 2019 and we're going to start with our 19 dash four zeros and a one number. If you told it that, then it would start at 0001. Mm -hmm. Correct. You can tell it you want it to do incremental. If it found 1848, it would make the next case number 1849. And let's say three people are clicking on the intake cases manager at the same time to create cases. It would do 1849, 1850, 1851, whoever clicked the button first. Yeah, ma'am. So what Janice is saying is in your settings and global settings, right here under formatting, you can tell it you want TriWorks cases to be incremental and your intake cases to be incremental. Okay. Uh, Vernon Washington asked if you What's could up, go over Virginia? production tracker and discovery queries really quick. Sure. I didn't have... Production tracker on. So production tracker allows you to keep track of items that have been produced and items that have been produced out. Items that you have produced and items that have been produced out. In the discovery query, and again, this is very document or data intensive. So when you're filling all these fields out, you're wanting to run reports based on the fields that are here. So don't fill part of the fields out, and then I'm going to leave them out on part of this, because when you run reports, those that you didn't fill out are not going to be reported. The discovery query allows you to enter different items that this document may be associated to. So say this is a damage document or a negligence document. It allows me to identify or tag damages and negligence to it. So once I run a, I want to run a report, once I've got all 3,000 documents in there, give me everything I've labeled as damages. Boom, I can run a report in just a second. Or give me everything I put in as negligence. Or give me everything I put in as damages and negligence. You can run that report and see those items. What's up, Vernon? Um, okay. Can you talk about how to email UDFs through the web intake? We go with the web intake, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I was trying to do that first one. So right here, when you edit, you can share or unshare the UDF if it's been associated again with that liability type. Okay. All right, so we've hit 12 o'clock. We have. You have been a champ. I have not. <laughs> My last question for you. Go. You're bouncing all over the country five days a week. You're training people. What is your favorite? Hey, have you ever seen this that really gets the oohs and ahs? The, the number one thing that, okay, there's, that's a loaded question because there's two of them. The number one thing that people in this whole show that I do, the one thing that triggers people and I get the, man, I can't believe it does that. Under the clients tab, if you put in the date of birth, you roll your mouse in there, you don't have to click. It tells you how old they are that day. At that point, I, every, every single time, every single time I show it, I put a date of birth in, and it shows their age. People are like, you have got to be kidding me. How, that's brand new, isn't it? It's been there as long as I've been at my firm. And I was at my firm in 2003. So it's been there. The biggest underutilized piece that I see that when I show people, they're like, there is no way that is brand new. Under the docket tab and seeing the date info. Seeing your scheduling order or your case management order right there in front of you. Not only can I see it, I can right click on it on any date, get a date calculator. So if it's 60 days, 90 days, 45 days, 37 days, whatever it is, I can go to the date calculator and I can say our trial is set for July 15th and I need to know what 45 days prior is for discovery 
I can click on that. It tells me it's May 31st. I can hit calculate, put that date in, bam. Now that date's there. Once I've got all my dates set in, I can send every single one of them to the docket, which then in turn, if I'm creating docket entries, it's gonna send it to the calendar for me. Once that's done, I don't want someone to come to me and say, hey, have we done this? Or hey, have we done that? I print the list off, put it in the hard file, and then as I comply with the date, I'll highlight it. So anybody wanted to, they could always go straight to that hard file, pull that out, see what we've done or what we haven't done. And this is one of the things that I've told people before is that at my firm, we had a cork board, we had our cork board, and we would put these up and comply with it. That way the senior partner, whenever he needed, he didn't have to ask, he didn't have to come around, he didn't have to do anything. All he had to do was go to the cork board and see what we were doing, where we were at, and where, making sure that everybody's staying in flow and going with that trial date. Those are the two biggest things. It can have a dashboard. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, there's a dashboard built for it. If you look, where's important dates? I'm, I was like, I know they're here. And you could see that dashboard. So again, that's all imperative with everything in TrialWorks is data entry. You've got to enter it. Does it take you an extra 10, 15 minutes? It might. Is it going to save you three days of work time on the back end? Sure it is. Correct. That's exactly where it pulls from. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Those dates are set. Those, those items are set. All right. So we are at 1204. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who stuck with us uh, through this webinar and absolutely everyone who joined us here in person. So thank you so much. I hope you guys learned a lot. Special shout outs to Eric and Diane and the rest of the TrialWorks team that helped make this happen. Really appreciate it. So I wanna reiterate, training is key. This program is massive. It's capable of so many wonderful things. Uh, take off share for me so I'm not being hunted by a shark. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so do me a favor. We got a lot of resources available for you. Take advantage of them. Check out our website, call our support folks, book training, because we're here to help. And we're going to make this program truly impactful for your law firm. After, uh, give me a couple days, we're going to chop up this video and we're actually going to put everything online. So if there's anything you want to review, that will be available to you. We also have an export of all the questions that were asked that we didn't get to. So I'm going to share that with the support team and have them reach out to the folks individually. We had a couple of firms that asked very specific questions, so we're going to get them taken care of as well. And again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.